You're troubled. Before leaving, I met Catherine Molesberg. She's in shock, as was reasonable to expect. She didn't even... She didn't even see her son, Alice. They ripped him away from her. Took him who knows where. That's why we're here. I must admit the lead we have is very peculiar, but... About that. Explain where you are dragging me again. My research led me to a certain Giuseppe Balsamo, who some identify as Count Cagliostro, one of the most famous alchemists of all time, or one of the most notorious crooks, according to others. <sighs> to think. I've been dragging this bomb bottle around with me for days. What do we know about this Cagliostro? Little or nothing. We don't know the date of his birth, we don't know precisely where he was born. Some even doubt he was really Giuseppe Balsamo. The only certain bit of information I found is about his death. Cagliostro spent the last years of his life in San Leo, in the Emilia-Romagna region. Basically, we're about to land in Italy to track down a man that presumably died two centuries ago. Presumably? And what about the professor you need to talk to in Rome? Lamberto Visconti, a cultural anthropologist of international fame specializing in the occult. If there's anyone able to help us reveal the mystery of the mirror found on the Sitla Lique, it's him. We're about to begin the landing procedure. Please, fasten your seatbelt. Well, that's that, it seems. We've come to the parting of our ways. Lars, don't... Don't give up. We'll find that baby. Eric. What? Catherine told me before we said goodbye. Find my Eric. Then yes, we will find him. Wow! I was immediately enveloped by the medieval atmosphere of San Leo. Great men once trod those cobblestone roads and admired the sights. Among them was Count Cagliostro. Questioning a tobacconist about Count Cagliostro, he would have thought I was crazy. Besides, I didn't want... I didn't want to risk falling into temptation. What a bad assortment of rabble. Hey, excuse me, are you a tour guide? No, I sell encyclopedias. My... My question was rhetorical. I'm just joking. What do you need? Hello? Anybody home? Oh, sorry. I was completely taken by your tie. Thanks. Your scarf's not bad either. I was wondering if you could give me a bit of information about the place. I'm sorry. I've been booked for a week by this tourist group. But you know what? Try the library. Gaia should be able to help in one way or another. That building with the glass door? Exactly. Take care, and enjoy San Leo. Hi. Good morning. Are you in charge of this place? Are you surprised because I'm a woman? You don't exactly reflect the stereotypical librarian I had in mind. Ah, uh, youth is an illness from which you soon get well. Sorry? I mean, I'm not as young as you may think. Come on, how old could you be? 30? 35? I'm 28. Thanks a lot. You're a tourist, right? The American accent is unmistakable. I was born in Italy, but I've lived in Florida for years. Miami, to be precise. You don't say. That must be fabulous. You bet your books. I'm Lazarus Bundy. I'm Gaia. I'm interested in getting some information about San Leo. Of course. 
We have information brochures for tourists. It seems like good stuff. I'll look into it. And if I were interested in more unusual topics... You're referring to alchemy, right? I'm afraid I'm not the best person to help you. I prefer to stay grounded, unlike Olive, who does nothing but chase certain ghosts. Who's Olive? Oh, just a friend of mine with his head permanently in the clouds. Take care, Gaia. Ads of various kinds, missing pets, dental practice, oh, tours of San Leo aboard a helicopter. An old-style device with rotary composition. Fascinating, but a bit uncomfortable to use. We had a similar one at home. My grandma kept talking to the receiver as if it were a microphone, and we made fun of her. Then what happened to Dad made all the laughter go away. Hey, old sport. How's it going? Beg your pardon? Oh, sorry, Father. I, I didn't see your collar. Wait, your name's eluding me. Well, I really don't see how you could. Uh, no, no, I can do this. I'm sure it starts with an S. Simone Samuele... Uh, Severio. You're definitely Severio. I'm Lazarus Bundy, and I just got into town, Father... Yes, well, I was waiting for you to tell me your name. Didn't I introduce myself? Where is my head today? I was clearly in front of a chronic senile. I'm Father Carlo. If I ask you for information about Count Cagliostro, the priest looked at me as if my phone started to ring during Sunday Mass. Count Cagliostro was a godless man who was unable to repent of his own sins to his dying breath. Hey, calm down. I was just curious. People like that are best forgotten. Is it an interesting read? Which one? I was talking about the book you're holding. Oh, this. Refreshing, I'd say. It's a historiography of our fortress. Did you know it was right here that Berengar II of Italy barricaded himself in with his sons to escape the fury of Otto the Great? And he continued to resist here until he was arrested and exiled to Bamberg. Maybe I underestimated the historical importance of San Leo. Goodbye, Father. Is he always so absent-minded? Today is actually better than usual. Astonishing. The fountain was full of crystal clear water, adorned with fresh flowers. I really knew how to make those kinds of things special in Italy. I wouldn't have known where else to go at that moment. Questioning a tobacconist about Count Cagliostro? He would have thought I was crazy. Hmm. Better think about it. I didn't understand how that could possibly help me. Maybe. Or maybe not. I thought it was better to look for another solution. The bartender looked like he wanted to spend the day idling there, chewing a wooden stick. In that moment, it didn't seem to be a good solution to me. On the first page, there was only an evocative panoramic photo. Wow. Medieval towers. 
ancient prehistoric monuments, bloody clashes, good stuff. Hmm, that tower seemed impressive. The Fortress of San Leo. The brochure claimed that Count Cagliostro spent his final days there. It might be a good starting point. Luckily, it was just around the corner, a short ride away. Majestic, the fortress towered over the surrounding hills. That was the place where Cagliostro met his demise. Fortress of San Leo was huge, and it emanated a centuries-old charm. The luxuriant nature, the sun high in the sky, all those shades of green, everything conveyed a deep sense of peace. Damn, work in progress. I'm afraid so. Unfortunately, we're renovating part of the fortress, and this is the only area open to the public at the moment. Listen, Luca, I've come so far to visit this place and... How do you know my name? It's written on your badge. Oh, well, anyway, I'm sorry, but even if I let you pass, you won't find much nowadays. You'll have to make do with this room. I'll take a look around then. The glass was translucent, and it didn't let me see how deep the well was. I had nothing else to ask him. The chainmail was as tough and scratchy as a grater to the touch. All of a sudden, all the hours spent making meatballs for Chef Tony flooded back to my mind. What nonsense. The panel stated that the structure would be closed to the public indefinitely. What followed was very interesting. Some of the artifacts have been temporarily moved to a nearby building, Castle Sancti Leones. Excuse me. Yes? That sign says some of the artifacts from the fortress were moved to another building. Yes, Castle Sancti Leones. The Marquis de Vilta, its owner, has agreed to host some of the finds from the fortress there during its period of renovation. All right, good to know. Do you know where I could find him? By now, he will surely be in Dante Alighieri Square. He's a creature of habit and spends half of his days reading the newspaper sitting at Oliviero's bar. You won't have any problems finding him. He's a very little man. I must thank you. Your contribution will help me save a newborn in danger. This guy's crazy. Ancient faces, elegant daggers, decorated figurines. When this story started, I'd have never imagined it would have ended up walking around museums. It led deep into the fortress. It was a pity that at the moment it was impossible to venture beyond. I was always surprised by the nonchalance with which laborers are able to work with such precarious balance on scaffolding like that. That panel was a reminder of the forced stay of Felice Orsini, the man responsible for the attack perpetrated against Napoleon III of France. The Emperor survived, but the three bombs thrown at his carriage caused real carnage. Ancient medieval coats of arms, adorned by their relative names and chivalric mottos. Ancient medieval coats of arms, adorned by their relative names and chivalric mottos. Good morning. Are you the Marquis de Vilta? Who are you? And who told you who I am? My name's Lazarus Bundy. I arrived here a few hours ago. 
I've just been to the San Leo Fortress, but found it close for renovations. There was a very friendly attendant, though, who told me about you and of the castle, uh, Santo Leonidum? Sancti Leonis, the castle of St. Leo, which my family renamed as such in honor of the local saint. Exactly what I just said. Would it be possible to access the building to take a look at the findings? The castle is private property, and if I agree to store a few ancient artifacts there, it is only because Walter Beringler, the director I hired to look after the building, insisted. Certainly not to set up a museum for American tourists. Bah. Listen, I just got here from Florida, and... And you should have better informed yourself before leaving. I'm very attached to that building. And the very few trusty people I let enter are in possession of a specific permit signed by me. A permit, huh? You spoke of a permit. Do I have any shot at getting one? You'd have a better chance of speeding past my vintage vehicle on that scrap heap of yours, young man. Hey, don't insult my green dart. I admit my share of bloated windbags, but this one threatened to explode at any moment. I would get that permit, and I would sign it myself. His home was the most likely place to look for one. I absolutely had to get his address. Tell me about San Leo. What do you take me for, a tour guide? Go bother someone else for heaven's sake. Trying to drag information out of that man felt like a salmon trying to swim upstream. I really need to go. I'll bear this pain with stoicism. Hey! Hey, mister! Huh? Are you talking to me? Of course I'm talking to you. Come here a second, please. Look, pal, would you do me a favor? I dropped my pendant, and to get it, I need to go around the building or climb over. Could you maybe... Why not? Here you are. Uh, very kind, uh, mister... Bundy. Lazarus Bundy. Lazaro? Like in the Holy Bible? There's a story behind that, actually. I'm Oliviero, the second best bartender in the world. Welcome to San Leo. What brings you here? Oh, nothing. I just wanted to disconnect from work and take a long trip through Europe. I understand. But I've seen you asking a lot of questions around here for a tourist. Occupational hazard? Mm-hmm. Why? What's your job? I decided not to show my cards to a perfect stranger. Operator for a statistical agency. Exciting, to say the least. Well, Lazaro, if you need anything, just ask. I have everything you might need. I didn't much like his attitude. He seemed harmless. Although, wasn't that quite the interrogation he'd just given me? What can you tell me about San Leo? San Leo is a small town. I think close to 3,000 people or so. There's a lot of history here. And we certainly don't lack tourism. And yet... I bet you dream about the big cities of the world. Ugh, oh, spot on. It's just that I didn't imagine ending up behind a bar counter after my PhD in chemistry. I believe I deserve something more out of life. Oliviero reminded me of myself in many ways. I left Italy with the same spirit, when searching for something that turned out to be just a fleeting moment of glory. What do you sell exactly? Purely basic necessities. Milk, tobacco, and alcohol. Tobacco and alcohol are basic necessities? Are you kidding? <laughs> Most people would sell their grannies for a carton of cigarettes. I know what you mean. Until recently, I um, smoked two packs a day. Wow! We're in the presence of one of the select few who managed to quit. Too late, though. The problem with smoking is that you don't realize how it's hurting you until someone else, generally in a white coat, shoves it in your face. Why did you say you're the second best bartender in the world? Rumor has it that the best of all lives in Rome. A true legend. It seems he scattered members of his family around the world, destined to become his heirs. Well, if you're such a good bartender, then maybe you're one of them. Hey, you're right. Do you know the Marquis de Vilta? Uh, who doesn't know that arrogant ass? For reasons I'm not going to explain, I need to reach his home, but I don't know the address. Oh, sorry, but I'd prefer to stay out of it. I don't want to get into trouble with him. He's too influential a person. Besides which, to tell you the truth, I don't exactly know where his mansion is. Out of town, anyway. Hmm, I get it. Do you chew that piece of wood all day? A piece of wood? I've heard it all now. This is a licorice root. You still look like a goat to me. Have you ever requested a permit for Castle Sancto Leonida? Castle Sancti Leonis. I tried once, yes. 
I wanted to organize a private tour for me and a companion. That little guy, though, allows entry only to a close circle of friends, and apparently I'm not part of it. But then again, I'm just a bartender. What happened to the form? I made a great paper plane out of it that earned me the current record here in San Leo. See you later. Move along, move along. There's nothing to see here. It looks like there's an ancient medieval castle, actually. You see wrong. This is private property, not a tourist attraction. And now, move along. I immediately got it. That dude would be a real pain in the neck. <laughs> 